and welcome to episode 49 and the last live edition podcast and we are live within the healthy runner facebook community for this 2020 send off party <laughs> share the lessons i learned during this crazy year help you hit your running goals in 2021 so i'm going to get a bit reflective here and i packed this episode into six tips but i am sure we will talk some more so this has been a crazy year for all of us that doesn't need to be said we're living through our first pandemic and i had plans to get closer to my half marathon pr i thought i would run three like i have done the past probably seven years and i thought i would lead my first half marathon training program for a big local half marathon right near me the cheshire half marathon we were selected to run the program and i was really super pumped to run that program for the first time and then COVID hit so i'm going to get very transparent with you here guys my world like so many of you got turned upside down and it's freaking scary as a business owner, when my primary form of income was helping people using the skills of my hands and taking people through exercises. And that's kind of what I pride myself on is taking people through specific exercises, giving them the corrections, being in close contact to them, not just having them do their exercises on their own in the corner of a room. So I learned many lessons this year, and I want to share them with you for our last episode of 2020. So we're bringing in the party here. Who's here with me? Let me know if you're here with me live. Just type in live into the comment box. And those of you who are catching the replay, let me know you caught the replay. Let me know you caught the after party. And uh, I'll be a shout out. So just as you guys are coming on here live, I do want to remind you that the early bird discount ends in four days. Four days for a healthy runner strength program. So if you want to give the gift of strength to your loved one, or to yourself, honestly, like we have to be a little selfish here sometimes. Uh, if you want to give the gift of strength to yourself or your loved one with the new Healthy Runner uh, strength program, you have until Thursday to do that. So if you haven't heard about the program, I'll let you know a little bit more about it later on. But as we're going through today, guys, I want you to drop your questions or the you learned below in the comment box. And I will either answer your questions or be able to comment on the lessons you learned because I want to hear from you guys today. This is going to be like a live party. So I see cats here on the live. <laughs> Cat says cool glasses. So those listening on the podcast, you guys are going to need to check out my new year barb here. Uh, if you're watching the replay um, or if you're listening on the podcast, go watch the replay on the Spark Your Training YouTube channel or just go right in our Healthy Runner Facebook group. Always go to the Topics tab, hit Monday Night Spark. You will find all these live trainings, all the live podcast interviews that we do on here. Brian's here on the live. Gene's here on the live. What's going on? Miss Yogi Rachel is here on the live. Thank you for your great episode last week. I will be looking forward to hearing it on the podcast this um, you shared some really neat breathing techniques that we can implement for our running. Uh, Trish is here on the live. Lou, oh my goodness, everyone's coming on strong here for the after party, for the uh, send off 2020. Ruth is here, Donna's here, Sean is here. Styling and profiling, Shauna says. There we go. And we've got necklaces, we've got glasses, speakers. It's like. If you're listening to the audio version on the podcast, try to try to name that noisemaker. See if you understand that. Um, so the fact that I'm actually able to read the screen through these glasses, I think is super impressive. So do you guys think that's impressive? Let me know. <laughs> impressive in the comment box. I didn't think I'd be able to read through these things, but I think I can for a little bit at least. Um, so let's get into... Or I want to know, those of you who are here on the live, if you guys are done with 2020, just type in done. If you're done, if you're like, I don't know about you guys, probably more than any other year, you know, you're probably looking forward to New Year's. I think people are going to be partying hard, hopefully socially distant within their little networks, within their pods, uh, within their quarantine pods uh, this year. But I think people are going to be 
a lot of alcohol consumed on that evening, I have a feeling. And most people won't be driving. So it will be pretty safe. There's going to be a lot of late... uh, have a feeling this year because I think we are definitely, definitely going to need to send off 2020 hard. And that's what I want to do tonight. That's what I'm here. I am and share the lessons that I've been thinking about this last week. This is episode 49 of the podcast. So 2020, the year of the pandemic that we'll never forget, was actually the year that the Healthy Runner podcast launched. For those of you newcomers, you didn't know that. And I didn't actually launched this podcast because of the pandemic. So many people did. A lot of new podcasts started after the pandemic because people had time and they were like, I always wanted to do a podcast. Now I have time. Let me do a podcast. But I actually didn't do that. Time last year, I actually had the first two podcast episodes recorded. So I had the plan in place already and I never thought that... (laughs) I would be creating content that I did create this year for the podcast. Uh, so uh, Shauna says she's done with 2020. Lynn says she's done. Donna says she's done. Jean says that's amazing. You can read through those glasses. Uh, Ruth says she's done. Trish says she's done. Lou says he's done, but he's going strong. Lou, you're going strong, man. BQ, you're going strong. And a lot of the lessons that I'm going to talk about tonight, guys, I think them from many of you honestly going through this community i think i'm going to need to take these things off maybe i'll just leave them on top of the head there um i think you know i learned so much from you guys uh this year that is it's just been an amazing journey honestly and hopefully some of these lessons i'm going to share with you tonight are going to really help you that you want to get, whether or not they're in-person, virtual, or whatever your running goals are. So whether it's to run your first half marathon, run your first 5K, run your first marathon, run a fast (laughs) half marathon, right? So whatever your goals are, hopefully the things I'm going to be talking about in today's episode are going to help get you there next year. So the first lesson that I really, really learned, and I honestly, because I've always been this type of person, but is that you want to stay away from negative energy. How many of you guys who are on here who just hate those negative Nellies, right? The negative energy, it just like sucks you down. But like, let's be honest, in 2020, hasn't there been more negative energy than you've ever seen before? Whether it's around you, whether it's on TV, whether it's on the radio, on a podcast, whatever you're listening to. If you're listening to a negative podcast, I'd probably say stop listening. Um, hopefully it's not this podcast, but stay away from negative energy. You become the company you are surrounded by. So if you are following people who constantly post negative energy on social media, um, then just stop watching their videos, right? Don't tune in to their videos because the algorithm says, you watch this video, I'm going to keep showing you more and more videos of this person, right? So think about who you're following on social media. And if you read a post, you see a post, you watch a video and it doesn't make you feel good. You're like, wow, that was pretty negative. Like I don't feel good about myself now. Then stop seeing those things, right? So like this year with the news and the beginning of the pandemic, or if you watch too much news during our whole period and the civil unrest during the summer, the financial crisis or the election, right? Like there was so much (laughs) negative energy this year, I think more than ever. So you need to set limits on how much of that you consume because if you consume too much, then you start to act that way and It prevents you from actually meeting your goals, being productive, and being the best person that you can be. So if your family or your coworkers are downers and they focus on negative about their current situation, then spend more time in the Healthy Runner Facebook group, right? So we are pretty positive here. We're going to uplift you. And that was kind of my whole goal when I created this Facebook community now, probably two and a half years ago. To, there are many physical therapists out there who have created kind of um, support groups, which really turn into sessions and people being just very negative on like 
why they can't do something because of their pain. And trust me, like I relate to all of you who are struggling, going through pain. I relate to that. But I didn't want to create this community to be focusing on the negative aspects of people's lives, like what they're struggling with only. I wanted this to be a positive, uplifting community so we could focus on being healthy and focus on our wins and focus on the things that we have control over and that we can change. And to be more proactive, more positive, kind of talk about not only your injuries, but what are you going to do proactively to prevent injuries? What are you going to do to get stronger? What do you need to know about nutrition? What do you need to know about mindset? Right? So those are all the things that I wanted to create in this community. So negative energy for you as a runner will affect your motivation to get your runs in or get your strength training in. So remember, consistency is key, right? With your training. So with your running, with your training, with Come on, let's be honest here. Anything in life, right? Consistency is key. And it's actually the fifth tip of the five tips for healthy running or the spark blueprint. Oh my goodness, guys. Can I please share? This is amazing because we have live audience on right now and you guys have like been the staple. So I, I feel like extra special releasing it to you first. So you are first to find out about this. Um, I'm super pumped. And I haven't even announced it publicly yet, but the Spark Blueprint that I kind of always reference in different episodes where I say like my five tips for healthy running or the Spark Blueprint, it was the first six episodes of this podcast because it's the foundation of what you need to do as a runner to stay healthy, to get stronger and prevent injuries along the way, right? So we can keep running into our 40s, 50s and beyond. Hopefully I'm running into it till I'm in the box. My goal, that's the information I want to share with you within this community. And it's always been the podcast episodes, and I created blogs of each of those, of each of those five tips, but they've all been separate. I've never had a place or like a home for the Spark Blueprint. So finally, 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 one of the, the great accomplishments of 2020 that I'm very proud about is the Spark Blueprint is actually done as an ebook. So I have the complete blueprint of how you can run stronger and healthier without aches and pains so you can keep running and doing what you love. I have that done as an ebook and it's all free for you guys. So again, this is what I'm passionate about. This is why I cast. And now I'm happy to announce that it is in ebook form. So you can actually get that if you want a little bit more in depth It's all bonus live training videos. So those are previous podcast episodes, video episodes that I've done on how do you strength train in order to run or how do you jump train in order to run? How do you take care of your soft tissues, right? How do you train smarter with proper progression? Um, so those are all the tips that I get in, in the blueprint. So you can either read it and look at the pictures, look at the visuals. It's kind of packaged together. Shout out to Allie, by the way. Allie, my assistant, our executive director, if you will. She's been working hard on that. We've been editing it for literally weeks now, and it is finally done. So if you guys who are here on the Facebook Live, if you guys want the ebook, just type in ebook or actually type blueprint into the comment box, and I will send you the link to that. It's a free link. You'll get and you'll always have it to reference. And I'm hoping it is super helpful for you. Like I said, this is kind of like the topic I'm passionate about and is really the foundational principles of really everything that we talk about moving forward. So you can get those five tips for healthy running, get the blueprint, uh, type it in the comment box. Those of you listening on the podcast, check the show notes. I'll have the link for you in the show notes. Click that link and then you'll get the blueprint so that can help you. All right, so I was kind of <laughs> digressing. A little excited, a little excited. Can I get a little <laughs> excitement for in 2020? So I, I just want to here. You guys are coming on strong. Um, so Rachel says that 2020 was hard, but man, 2020 also brought some awesome people into my life. Really great energy and support. I've been very grateful for that. 
Absolutely, Rachel. And we talked about that during last week's episode. Like you coming into my life uh, has been awesome. I love the energy in your effortlessly strong and consistent runner group, right? So for yoga for runners. And if Rachel, if you don't mind dropping the link again for your Facebook group, that'd be awesome for our audience. Um, Jean says, yes, that's true. Trish says, I completely agree. 2020 was very difficult and met some amazing people because of it. That is true, right? So Trish, you could have still been working out at Orange uh, Theory there and we would have never met, right? And I am so glad we did. And you are absolutely pushing your health goals and you've been consistent all along the way. Um, so Brian says 2020 has been tough. He's had some stop them from running. So absolutely, Brian, but you are getting healthy now. So I am, uh, I'm, I'm thinking positive for you. All right. Your year. And, uh, cat <laughs> says that's awesome about the blueprint. Ruth wants the blueprint. Uh, Brian's going to get the blueprint. So is Rachel, cat, Trisha, um, Kyla, thank you so much for joining. And I will definitely send you the blueprint. Um, Donna says blueprint and, Yes, uh, Jean. Yeah, shout out to Allie. Uh, she'll be listening to this in her ears as she edits the episode for the podcast. So shout out to Allie, honestly, for <laughs> editing all these episodes as well. Uh, thank you so much, Allie, uh, for all you do. Um, this, honestly, all the things that I'm going to talk about tonight wouldn't have been able to be done without your hard work. So I appreciate you. All right. First lesson learned is all the negative energy out of your life, right? And try to decrease the consumption of negative energy. And even when like the pandemic went down, like I would watch the news to get my updates on like what's happening in my local area, what's happening with shutdowns, what phase are we in, right? It was all, all like confusing. No one knew what the heck was going on. No one knew about this virus. So I'd get the updates, but then that was it. And then I had to shift gears. I had to go to my people, the people that inspire me, the people that kind of light my fire, kind of keep me going because I had goals that I was still going to hit in 2020, no matter what was going on in the world. So I needed to kind of focus my energy on the positive people and the positive things in my life versus the negative energy. So that's the first lesson learned, guys. Second, set and remember the important people in your life and set time aside for them. So this really honestly goes back to when COVID first hit. So prior to COVID hitting, just so you guys know, if you don't know, um, I also teach at a PT program and that's kind of the day job. And then I would basically treat patients one-on-one um, -on -one in my clinic uh, pretty much every evening. And life was pretty crazy prior to COVID where I wouldn't get home till pretty much 9, 9.30 or 10 o'clock every single night. So that meant I wasn't having dinner with my family uh, during the week, you know, have dinner together on the weekends, but working from home during those first, you know, two or three months of COVID really allowed my family and I to actually time together where we would work. Everyone would be doing like their, uh, you know, online learning. My wife would be working, I would be working, and then we need a mental break, right? Because you only could take like, let's be honest, right? Eight hours at the computer. So what I would do is we would go for a mental clearing run. So my wife and I would run and the girl, first off, they haven't rode their bikes in like years. So that was like amazing for them to actually get on their bikes, get some exercise. And that's what we did two or three months, every single day, we would go for a nice, easy conversational pace runs. It was great for my wife and I to connect and spend time with the girls. And then after that, the girls and I, when my wife was getting dinner ready, would always play volleyball. So we'd be playing volleyball. And that time to me was like so And I really cherished that time and those moments. And I realized that I was missing those things. And, you know, I, you know, clinic really started increasing again in terms of the patients I was treating, that I was going to set some boundaries. And I was going to remember those important people in my life. And I was going to set a premium on family first and the people I love. So I needed to balance my work family life a little better. So I decided on Wednesday and Fridays, I was not going to treat. I was not going to see patients Wednesday and Friday evenings. I would see patients earlier on Wednesdays. I would do earlier on Fridays if I could um, with my teaching schedule. But I was going to have dinner. We were going to have dinner together as a family. So I kind of set that boundary and 
trust me, like definitely the balance. And I'm trying to improve upon it. Um, I'm sure my wife would uh, chime in otherwise that I can make some more improvements in that area. But I decided really that I was going to set a priority. And after every dinner, we play a family game. So whether it's Clue, Sequence, or Rummy Cube, like those are the Scotty favorites right now. Let me know for those of you who have kids and or if, if you don't have kids like to play uh, board games. What are your favorite games? Blocus was one of them that I got right in the beginning of the pandemic that I actually posed a question on what your suggestions were. And we love it. We like, it's an absolute staple in our rotation now. Um, we're absolutely loving that game. And those times are just honestly like precious, right? You can't get those times back. So Really think about setting boundaries in your life, setting boundaries as a runner. So for those of you who maybe you're running is everything in your life, right? And you're just consumed by the data, consumed by everything that you're doing in your life revolves around your running. Think about what's most important in your life and perhaps set some of those boundaries. Or if it's other things like work getting in the way of you meeting your running goals, then think about setting some of those boundaries. And again, I, I, I'm I, guilty of that. Like, trust me. Like, you know how many mornings that I got up and I was like, okay, I'm going to do this blog, upload these YouTube videos, and then I'm going for my run. And that blog post, YouTube video turned into responding to emails, turned into doing the next task. And then it was already too late to get my run in. And I missed my run. And I hated that. I, I know I don't feel good. Like I need to get my run in. I need to do some form of exercise each and every day, whether it's my run or my workout. So I didn't like that. And I would highly recommend the big lesson that I learned uh, this year, set those boundaries and remember the important people in your life. Um, third lesson learned. So before we even get to the third lesson learned, Brian says Monopoly. Monopoly just takes forever though, Brian, doesn't it? Like I used to love Monopoly. Like that was a great game. Like, you know, you get park at lock it up. Um, but Monopoly like is the game that like never ends, doesn't it? Um, so uh, Brian Clark, thanks for jumping on here. Um, he says catchphrase. It's a classic here. Hey, I've never even tried that. I'm going to have to go look that up, Brian. Thanks for the suggestion. Uh, Rachel says she spent a solid month and a half running without my Garmin. It was quite freeing. Yeah. So Rachel, I know Kat talks about that all the time. Um, and there are a lot of people that actually felt a little freer running, right? And even not having the stress is and need a new pace. Like so many more people fell in love with running this year, which is just amazing. Um, and jeans do not charge your Garmin. Um, Brian also says backgammon. Brian, I haven't played backgammon since I was like a kid. Um, I got to look that one up again. All right, so guys, let's get into lesson learned is the difference between expectations and goals. So actually taught me this recently, and I thought this was a very um, because when we launched the Healthy Runner Strength Program two weeks ago, I had goals of helping 50 runners with our strength program. And now we're actually at 47. So we're pretty darn close. Um, so three more people, you got four days to get in. Um, but I could not expect that I would get 50 people in the program and be able to help 50 runners. Because if I didn't get 50, like if no one signs up from now until Thursday, then I would get 47. I'd be Right, so the biggest difference between goals and expectations is that goals are meant to be something that you work towards. So they're generally something you're passionate about and something you generally in your life, your business, your running. So for us as runners, your goal of getting under four hours in a marathon or under a sub two hour half marathon or maybe a sub 20 minute 5k or sub 30 minute 5k for that matter are great aspirations and goals and we have a passion for getting there but 
expected, right? So we, they may not be under our control, right? So what if you had terrible weather? Or what if your stomach just did not agree with you on race day, right? You didn't have control over that. So if you have the expectation that you're going to run a sub two hour half marathon and you don't hit it, then what does that leave you with? That leaves you with disappointment. And come on, let's be honest. Why are we running? for mental clarity, right? First and foremost, I think most people in 2020, um, let, let me know guys in the comment box, are you running? What are you running for most in 2020? Let me know in the comment box. Um, now it is that mental clarity. So we don't want to feel bad about ourselves and we don't want to be negative and we don't want to be disappointed in ourselves if we don't meet those expectations. So you have to think about realistic expectations. And so for me, like my business coach, we worked on this and said, yeah, I would love to be able to help 50 people. And it was like, I always thought about goals and expectations and kind of confused them. And they were like all in the same for me. It was like, I had a goal of this, I'm going to achieve it. I had a goal of, you know, getting my PhD, I had a goal of, you know, becoming an OCS and orthopedic certified specialist. I had a goal of getting a PhD. I attained it. I had a goal of launching the podcast and we did it, right? So those were kind of expectations and goals. So I guess I was a little confused with that, but he kind of clarified that for me. And I think that I've I've worked with this year that a lot of times you're running goals because you expected them, then you're disappointed. And like, that makes me feel terrible as a coach, honestly, (laughs) because I hate seeing runners that are disappointed because I've seen the hard work that you have put in on a weekly basis, on a daily basis and on a consistent basis. And you don't want to kind of be disappointed um, because of those expectations that you've had, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Um, So again, like sometimes our, you know, it's out of our control and Trust me, like I say, like shoot for the stars. Like I'm such a positive person that I'm like, yeah, you have a goal. You can do it, but we're not going to expect to run that 50K in a certain amount of time, right? So like all the runners I work with, first off, it's like your first marathon, your first half marathon, like you should a certain time. Like don't even shoot for a time. Just expect to finish or expect to train Put the training in consistently and do the best you can do. Take in the most information that you can take in, you can learn from, and then you just right and you do your best. That's the expectation. Um, your goal is that you finish it. Your goal is that you get a certain time, but it's not expected. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. So the difference between expectations is one of the things that I learned this year. So yeah, Kat, I knew you were. I knew you were a big fan. Uh, She says that she is a fan of running without metrics unless you're doing specific training program. Um, Rachel says, I can definitely be that person. So fall into the trap of paying too much attention to my watch. (laughs) Oh, that's me for sure. Jean says she's running for stress relief. Ruth says, I just like to do it. Makes me feel good. Absolutely, Ruth. Keep killing it. Keep going out there. Um, Lou says, I do wear a watch all the time, then just forget about it. So it is nice that, and we talked about that in the Garmin episode. Um, Stephanie talked about that, Lou, is it is nice. You could just hit start on your Garmin, like never look at it and just know that, hey, it's tracking data in the background. You know, it's going to track those stats for you in case you want to use those in the future. So I know Rachel, Rachel says she just talked about goals and intentions tonight. Um, there's a difference there too. I know Rachel, I'm so upset actually that I wasn't able to tune in. Unfortunately, I was, um, feverishly trying to jot down some notes for right now, this talk. So I wasn't able to tune in, but I know you are so good about that, by the way, within your Facebook group, talking about goals. I love that. Um, I think it's just great to like set the mindset correctly from the beginning And Lou says that running brings in such great community of people. Absolutely, Lou. And that is definitely one of my big things. And I kind of talked about that in, I forget which episode now, what number, but it was the episode I talked about how I ran a marathon in four years to run faster. 
episode, I talked about the importance of our community and really, honestly, what you guys have done for me this year in 2020. And community is what it's all about. All right. So let's get to our next next lesson learned is make a plan. So for those of you that don't know, I mentioned it before, but the podcast did launch in 2020, but it wasn't something that just happened all of a sudden, like pivot a lot of things in 2020, right? We didn't have a plan for all this. I did not have a plan to be like launching full virtual visits, being able to help people all around the world. No clue I'd be helping people in London and Scotland, um, in California, Utah, Texas, Ohio. Like I've met some really cool people all over the country this year and being able to help some runners um, with their problems virtually. I had no plans whatsoever. So don't get me wrong. Everything can't be planned. But if you have specific goals. So for me, it was to turn the Facebook community into something that during a run. And myself, I listen to podcasts during my easy conversational paced runs because I love to learn. I'm like a lifelong learner. So I just love to listen to podcasts and learn more information. So I wanted to turn our Facebook community into a podcast. And that was my goal. And I made a plan for that. I made a plan that I was doing the Cheshire half um, before the pandemic. So now for 2021, think about making your, what are your running goals? Don't just say, I want to run a marathon. What is your plan? Are you going to follow a plan online, a half marathon training plan? That's great. Are you going to join our Team Healthy Runner half marathon training program when it uh, launches in February? That'd be great. Is your plan to hire a run coach and work one-on-one with someone? Whether that's me, whether it's one of our healthy runner coaches, whether that's any run coach out there. Um, The point is, have a plan on how you're going to accomplish your goal. So for me with the podcast, it was, I had the whole plan. I was like, all right, these are going to be the first six episodes. I kind of set everything in place. This microphone last year for Christmas. So that was uh, last year's Christmas gift. That was my big gift that I asked for for Christmas was his microphone because I had a plan. I wanted to launch the podcast. And that, that is what it's all about is make a plan and you will find that you're able to hit those goals if you do have a plan um, 90 times out of 100, right? So it definitely increases your odds to having a plan in place. All right. And then Rachel says, yes, make a plan, be intentional, integrate your why. Yes. I love it. Love it. All right. So set. So fifth lesson learned here. Fifth lesson learned is set priorities. So think about those goals that Rachel's talking about and being intentional. And then how will you get there? So for me, when COVID happened, my goal was to launch this podcast, as I mentioned, right? To be able to help more runners learn through the podcast so I can impact my and that I'm most passionate about. Prior to COVID, I helped runners, dancers, and gymnasts and spent two evenings a week in a gymnastics gym, kind of coughing up chalk from the uneven bars um, during the summers, uh, treating patients in 96 degree weather because there was no AC in there and I was just dripping everywhere. So I was in some crazy conditions and don't get me wrong. Like I really enjoyed helping this population because like runners, most of the medical community really doesn't understand the true demands of the sport of gymnastics. And I had a daughter who is a gymnast. So I did have a little selfish reason to learn more about gymnastics. I furthered my education, went to a lot of gymnastics, medicine courses, conferences, and I had a passion for learning more about that, that sport. And so I was able to help those gymnasts. However, with gyms closing when COVID hit and dance studios closing, all of my focus and priorities went to helping the running community. So I was able to set those priorities what can I do now? Like, there's nothing I can do. I literally cannot go into the gymnastics gyms. I literally cannot go into the dance studio to help those patients out. So my runners are like all I got, right? That So I'm going all in. That's where I set my priorities. And 
that's kind of the focus that I had and I was able to accomplish more because now I was focused and I set some priorities so I can have a greater impact within my community, right? So for you as a runner, setting your priorities based upon your running goal. So is it to run a certain distance? Then you need to prioritize running consistently multiple times throughout the week and increasing your long runs goal is to get faster, then you need to prioritize your strength training, your jump training, your speed work to improve your speed and get faster as a runner. Also, don't forget about prioritizing your nutrition and prioritizing your sleep for recovery, right? So you can meet those running goals um, because those play a crucial role in your success as well. So what priorities For those of you who are here live, let me know what priorities will you guys set for yourselves heading into 2021? I'm kind of curious if you've thought about this at all or what's going to be your priority that you're going to set. I know many people have set some yoga priorities who are here on the live with Rachel's 2020 about challenge. Check Rachel's uh, Facebook group that she dropped the link here on Facebook. Um, What priorities will you set for it's definitely my strength training and my jump training uh, next three months that's pretty much what i've been doing the last couple of years so thinking about periodization meaning you should change your at different time periods throughout the year so you're not focusing on just running just running all times throughout the year because then the body usually breaks down and it doesn't really respond to those demands. All right. So let's talk about next lesson learned. So this is actually my final lesson, guys. This is it. I'm bringing it down. So the sixth lesson learned during 2020 was to invest in yourself. So for the parents on the live right now, if you guys are parents, I want to know how many of you would do anything for your kids right now. So have you paid lots of money for your kids' dance classes, gymnastics? I know I have for both of those. I have two, right? Soccer or Horseback riding lessons, right? I know those are pretty expensive um, as well. What about, have you maybe probably did too many um, gifts under the tree this week? I know our tree is looking a little full, probably a little too many gifts than what our kids really needed um, to be under the tree. So really what I wanted to do horseback riding cat says yes definitely um so this is actually the first year that I have fully invested in myself honestly so for those of you that don't know I did start my business out of necessity honestly after um getting another two degrees and more debt in higher education and kind of my business started organically based upon need. And I was able to fill a gap in the medical system for athletes and active adults um, that really weren't being fulfilled um, out there. So I didn't really have a plan to start the business. I didn't have any money saved to start the business. I didn't have any money to invest in my business. But this year I was able to invest in myself, in my business. I paid for a run coaching certification, right? And learn more about run coaching so I can help my patients be able to train in order to prevent injuries that they were coming into my clinic for. I invested in programs to launch my telehealth practice. I invested in most recently, really the amazing business coaching program that launched my online business, right? So if I didn't do these things, then I wouldn't be able to finally launch the Healthy Runner Strength Program. So sometimes you need to invest in yourself if you want to get to the destination you want to get to and meet your goals. So for you as a runner, you might this might mean investing in a run coach. It might mean investing in a personal trainer, maybe taking an online course 
or buying a training plan to make you a smarter and healthier runner because we don't know everything, right? And that's that's the point is that we don't know everything and you know, you're not going to be who has it all down and you're not going to be the person who understands. So that's really, honestly, the the lesson that I learned is that you need to really invest in yourself in order to get to where you want to get to. And you're able to get there a lot quicker than you would if you tried to just stumble upon it yourself. Like, trust me, I've done that for years. And it's taken me a long time to get to where I'm finally feel like I'm getting traction with the things I want to do and the programs that I want to help runners with. Um, so hopefully that made uh, sense sense for you guys. And those are just some of the lessons I learned during 2020. So I really kind of share lessons that I learned that I talked about is really stay away from negative energy, set boundaries and remember the important people in your life and set time aside for them. The difference between goals, talked about making a plan, talked about setting priorities, and lastly, investing in yourself. So hopefully you learned something during this episode and for those of you who may be struggling with to get your workouts in and you're not sure what you should be doing for strength training, um, the Healthy Runner Strength Program, as I mentioned earlier, is available, is live, and you can give the gift of strength for the next four days. So if you're considering it, if you're on the fence, you have questions, like just reach out to me, let me know what they are, and I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. The feedback has been amazing so far for everyone who's in the program. If you haven't heard about the program, it's a self-paced 12-week step-by-step video spreadsheet training program focused on implementing life-changing run-specific workouts to improve your strength and confidence for running. All right, so it's really perfect if you're new to running and you're not sure what you should be doing or you're an experienced runner and you want to get faster and you really haven't done jump training before, you haven't done specific um, strength training to make you a faster runner and these are your weak points and these are the things that are going to kind of put you over the the edge there, over the hurdle. Um, That's what this program will do. So we already have, as I mentioned, 47 people who took advantage of the early bird rate, and I'm just loving the feedback. So if you're ready to commit to getting stronger, those of you who are here on the live and you're not in the program yet, just comment committed. If you're watching this on the replay, comment committed, um, and I will get you the details so you can get in for the early bird rate. So guys, here I'm going to tell you about a little sneak peek into 2021. I got big, big plans for our Healthy Runner community. So first off, our Facebook community will be growing in leadership as we will have our Healthy Runner team of coaches contributing more content for you and assisting in this group. So we also have new programs coming in 2021. The widely popular Team Healthy Runner Half Marathon program will definitely be coming back starting in February. So keep an eye out for that information when that gets launched. Also, wondering... If you guys would like a Couch to 5K training program option, let me know. If you would, please comment Couch to 5K. If you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube, or if you're listening on the podcast, then please send me a message in Facebook Messenger. Send me a DM on Instagram. Spark your training, all one word, or shoot me an email so you can get all my show notes. Please let me know. I want to see what the interest is for this. I have a person that would love to do a little Couch to 5K program for a healthy running community. So I want to know if the interest is there. We're definitely doing the half marathon uh, training program, but let me know about the Couch to 5K if you are a new runner and we love our beginner runners. So guys, we also have some really great content um, planned for you really to kick off the year. Like I am super pumped. I already have these episodes booked. These are going to be our Monday night spark lives in January and February, um, which will be our podcast episodes. So I do have our friend Harrison and Mo Crum 
from Marathon Training for Beginners. They are coming on the show, so I'm super pumped about that. I was gracious enough to go on their show and share basically our Spark Blueprint um, on how to run healthy with them. And they're going to come on our show and talk about marathon training for beginners. So I'm super pumped about that. So we're also having Jen Giles, who is a registered dietitian. She's going to come on the show and share nutrition for runners. So I do like to get a good nutrition episode every probably six to eight weeks in there. So Jen is going to um, be able to share and drop a bunch of knowledge for us. Um, that's that's super exciting. And then we're going to have Dr. Petri Gliano, um, which I just butchered his name. So I apologize for that. But he is a professor and a chief of orthopedic surgery at Keck Medicine of USC. He's actually the head team position for the LA Kings as well as USC athletes. I'm going to come on our show to discuss early OA in runners. So early arthritis in runners and how do we manage that? So that's going to be an important episode, especially I've had a bunch of um, people in our community reaching out to me of late that have some kind of early onset of arthritis in their knees, and they've been asking me a lot of questions. So I'm sure that episode is going to be super helpful. And then I'm like, I can't even say this without I might even throw my glasses for this one. So we're going to get with Olympian Kerry Tullefson. So I'm super pumped about this. Um, I was lucky enough to go, uh, to go on Kerry's show this week, um, which will be aired on her C Tolly Run podcast. And she is just an amazing person. Like I thoroughly enjoyed my conversation with her. And Kerry, if you guys don't know, is a five-time NCAA champion, three-time national champion, and represented the U.S. in the 2004 Olympic Games. Um, she has like a wealth of fitness experience. Her personality is just amazing. Um, her podcast is super popular, uh, see Tally run. And I'm more than humbled to have her come live within our community to share with us her life after the sport of running, um, running and training through pregnancy. She's going to talk about, she's going to talk about trying to run fast in a different way. And then also staying fit while not putting on tons of mileage. So those are the things she's going to share. So those are just some of the episodes that I have booked, have scheduled to kick off 2021 to runner. So we can really spark off the new year, right? And uh, get to race, whether it's being consistent, whether it's getting in better shape, whether it's finally like kicking COVID to the curb. Hopefully we're going to be in a better place in the spring, in the summer. Positive things are coming our way, guys. We're almost there. We're almost there. We can see the light. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. I think I can see it. I think I can. So if you found this talk helpful, guys, who are here on the live, hit that like, hit the love button. Show me some happy new year love because this is the last time I'm going to see you in 2020. All right. Um, this has been amazing. Honestly, this ride in 2020 with the podcast if you're listening on the podcast, guys, share this episode with a friend of yours who really needs to start, start honestly listening to our podcast. And if you guys are watching an Apple iTunes, please, please, please hit that, like just scroll down, hit the stars, hit the rating, drop like a couple sentences of a review. Let other runners know why you love listening to this podcast. Reach out to me this week. I just absolutely love your messages. So first off, like send me a DM in Instagram. Send me a message in Facebook Messenger. I want to hear from you guys who are listening on the podcast and because I, I just love hearing your stories and so many of you have reached out this week and I just love, love that we you in your running goals and to kind of keep you interested as you are crushing those miles. So thank you guys who jumped on here for the live. Thank you for those who caught the replay. Or if you listen or spark your training YouTube channel, got to give you some YouTube love. Remember every Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we go live within the Healthy Runner Facebook group, except next week. So next week, taking a week off, guys. First vacation, meaning like no work, definitely all of 2020. So I haven't done that at all, all this year. So I need to do that to recharge the batteries. It's been a hard push and we got our Healthy Runner Strength Coaching Program starting up 
January 1st or the first week in January. I think it's January 4th. Um, so that is the next time I will see you guys live within Facebook here next Monday. We don't have a live, but I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for keeping us in mind in your schedule. Honestly, this year has been, even though one of the most challenging, difficult years, I can honestly say in my life, um, you all here on Facebook, whether or not you're on, you know, follow me on Instagram or within our podcast community have really like given me the meaningful things that I'm going to take away from this year. And it's always going to be 2020 was the year the podcast was launched. We did 49 episodes. I showed up every week for you guys and we shared a lot of amazing people in the running community, in the medical community, experts for you guys and those relationships that I've made, I'm never going to forget. Honestly, I'm never going to forget that we have the spark blueprint finally done, that we finally have the healthy runner strength program that started out as just a live kind of Facebook live class that I was doing in the spring. And now it's this complete comprehensive program um, that's really structured to help you get stronger. So those are the things that I am honestly going to remember about 2020. Well, I remember wearing a mask. Yes. Will I remember working from home for like two months? Yes. Will I remember that time with my family? Absolutely. Because now it's helped me kind of prioritize the important things in my life. And that is my family, first and foremost, the people I love, and honestly is my running community and you guys, my healthy runner community. You guys have been amazing. Thank you so much for your support throughout the year. Um, I wish nothing but um, blessings, honestly, to you and your families this week. Um, if you've been celebrating, if you celebrated Hanukkah, hope you had an amazing uh, time with your families. And if you're celebrating Christmas, Merry Christmas to you. Happy New Year. All right, guys. Have a great New Year. I appreciate you. So be sure to tune back for the amazing value we're going to add in the show in 2021. And do I say it? See you next year, right? Is, is that what we say? So remember, guys, stay active, stay healthy, and just keep running into 2021. Until next